pass from Havili was magic. The shift on for Crotty. Boom, far down you go, Quackett Smith. Me, oh my, I haven't enjoyed that. Yes, boy. Sit back, relax, put your belt on, and enjoy the show. Okay, welcome to the Draft Rugby Show, where we discuss fantasy super rugby, the game they play online in heaven. I'm your host, Kargi, back after another week off, and uh, I'll have to start with a big thanks to longtime listener and even longer time legend Mitch Evans for joining the boys on the pod last week. Definitely uh, over, long overdue. Um, we'll have to make sure his name goes up on the pod caps uh, on the website when I get around to putting up a page for that and in the show notes. Harry, I assume we still have pod caps in the show notes. Do we even have show notes? Um, yes, we have I, show notes. Yes, we, he's on the pod caps. And yes, you do need to do something on the website. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> and speaking, yes, you of again. The, speaking of the boys, uh, joined again by Harry and Nelson, the co-stars, uh, both, in fact, beating me in the podcaps, beating me in the uh, really. uh, Boys, how are we and how did we enjoy the rugby on the weekend? Yeah, look, I, I love the, the footy in the weekend. Got to get out to the Tars match, second week in a row, which has been pretty good to, to go see. And there's plenty of positive signs. It was a pretty vocal cl- crowd, but uh, you did know you, it, was, it was good footy. Did you and Ellen get half the stadium um, each, like to yourselves, or um, what, how did it? It actually wasn't a terrible crowd, you know, considering everything that's been going on. I, I don't know what the figures were, but it was very vocal. But I do feel like a lot of people came up from Canberra. Very good. And Harry, what about yourself? Did you catch all the footy? And I did. Uh, I went out to the rugby with Nelson. It was like he said, it was a good game despite the loss. It was uh, very encouraging to see the Tars actually giving a crap. And uh, you know, you gave Mitch a shout out, but I want to give a special shout out myself. We've been taking some, uh, I, I guess, tips from people and some feedback on board this week to record a bit late, which I'm sure you're going to get to in a second. But on the note, knowing that we were taking feedback at Russell, the rugby has said he's keen and happy to take over for you, Kagi, on the <laughs> podcast. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. Um, you seem to have shut it down though. Well, uh, mate, I'm, I'm all ears. Look, as a, as a man of the people, uh, and this is the people's show, the fantasy rugby people's show. Um, look, I mean, if, if, if this is, are these just hollow uh, claims? Like, I mean, we can get well, the host on. I mean, he's almost got as many wins as you in our fantasy comp this year. And he's not in our fantasy comp. That's, so, um, that's fair. You do well. Uh, look, I... Um, I did take the week off. I was up in Queensland. Uh, I was moving up there for two reasons. I was basically waiting until either my fantasy team got a win or the Waratahs showed any promise whatsoever. And um, yeah, obviously I'm back this week, not because my fantasy team got a win. Um, So um, take from that what you will. I did in fact go down to Harry. I've very well done. Harry is being very modest. Not uh, he's, he's held it in till now. I'm sure it would have erupted at some point. But, um, oh, look, you brag about the big ones, don't you? You just don't brag about <laughs> the ones that mean nothing these days. And well, Kagi, you're... On cue, Nelson will now talk about how he's doing this season. <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't going to talk about how I'm doing. I was actually going to talk about how you're doing. So we've Harry and I have had one pod cap, you know, challenge this, this year. You've had two. You've competed with both of us. How have you gone out of those two? Um, it's, it's not great. Um, <laughs> like, it could be better. Uh, How many points have you taken out? It's a zero from two. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, th- I guess things can only get better from here. Um, it's one way to look at it. But uh, yeah, anyway. no, you, haven't, you haven't done any punishments yet, so it could get worse. It's true. Well, you know all about punishments, so I'll have to come to you for some advice on how to handle that. Um, Cry. If it gets to that point. But uh, anyway. Yeah. Let's get into the pod. As Harry said, um, we're, we're, you know, we listen to your feedback, uh, our listeners. We value um, you know, engaging with you and your feedback. And so we're going to try to do things a little bit differently this pod, just change up the structure a little bit. Uh, let us know what you think. We have people that want us to record earlier in the week or later in the week. We're just trying something different. So yeah, uh, get after us. Let us know how you enjoyed it. So uh, tonight we're going to discuss the main talking points from Draft Rugby Round 6. And then we're going to preview the fixtures coming up in Draft Rugby Round 7. So getting into Draft Rugby Round 6, the main talking points, uh, there's no points really bigger than the Highlanders beating the Crusaders and in Christchurch, no less, 
wowzers. What do we think? Oh, look, this is just absolutely amazing. Uh, we, we've said, uh, at least I know I said earlier in the season that I didn't think the Crusaders were as good or as clinical as they have been in, in previous seasons. But, I mean, there's just no way any of us would have picked this. It was just off the back of what happened with the Highlanders throughout the year as well, or th throughout the week, and had a lot of players dropped. I think it was about six players. These players really stood up and you know, earned the win this, this week. Nelson and I actually doubled down on the Crusaders at halftime <laughs> when they were down by seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just going, well, here's great value. They never lose. And uh, <laughs> lo and behold, we were wrong, but we were happy to lose our money on that one. It's been, uh, it's been an awesome upset and really good for the competition, I think. And also, what about the balls on Tony Brown? I mean, you know, obviously a bunch of players with um, disciplinary issues uh, after some, you know, big house party or something the week before, standing down a bunch of his best players and sticking to his guns and not, you know, Look, uh, not rolling them out because it was the Crusaders. Like, that's huge. I think he had nothing to lose, really. And I mean, he, he had a 10 that's a competent 10 who was worth giving a shot there anyway. He had an 8 that was a competent 8 that was worth giving a shot there anyway. You know, like, I think it was the right call from him. Um, but, I mean, he had more to lose by sweeping it under the rug and creating a worse culture. I think it was, you know, a no-brainer despite the result. Mm. True. Now, um, other quickly, the other big talking points, we mentioned that the Waratahs almost upsetting the Brumbies. Um, boys back. The Waratahs, they showed us something. Um, look, I think what there's all the cliches of... Um, we just for those who are not watching us and listening to the pod on YouTube, you'll find I've just put my Tars beanie on. Harry's found a flag in the background. Nelson obviously doesn't support the Tars, so that's fine. But um, you. <laughs> um <laughs> no, it was great from the Tars. Uh, I think yeah, lots of cliches about how kickers don't um, win you games. They just uh, I forget what the actual quote is, but um, yeah, exactly. Opposite. They don't lose <laughs> you games. <laughs> that's, that's where I went wrong. That's yeah. it. Good. I'm yeah. confusing winning and losing a lot this year. It's um, it's. <laughs> No, no brainer. Um, but still, I mean, I think Will Harrison missed. Uh, he got three from five kicks. Um, obviously, he was gutted in the end. But um, lots of positive from the Tars. That was that was a big turnaround in a week where they had the head coach dropped. Um, what we all would agree, we're not going to get into it, but pretty un unnecessarily. Um, don't really know what that achieves at this point. But um, yeah, huge performance from the Tars. What did you guys like from that? Well, first of all, the Jake Gordon leadership was massive. You know, the first few minutes, I think the Waratahs considered a couple of tries, first to Tom Banks and then Tom Wright. Both of them, the Waratahs did not even try to defend. And Nelson and I were strapping ourselves into another 50 or 60 point loss. And from there, Gordon seemed to just make them show up and keep them accountable. And I, I'm giving it all to his leadership. I don't know how much better a leader he is than the man who I will never name on this podcast again, but i got to say, I was very happy to put my Waratahs jersey back on with a new captain. And, uh, and I, I think he was exceptional. Um, the other one for me was just the kicks at goals. The Waratahs lost this game in the end because they didn't take their points around half time. And to me, it kind of reeked of a lack of confidence thinking that they weren't in the game. So they may as well just try and take their points for tries when they could get them. But instead, if they yeah. just had a little more composed, kick their points when they're on offer, they definitely would have been in the opportunity or position ahead at the end of the game rather than chasing the game. So they're the big ones. Yeah. Today. There was a very obvious one just before that half time. I think they should have taken the points. Then I think three or four times they, they chose to take the line out and, and it was never close. You know, like it, 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 they should have learned pretty quickly that it wasn't going to be their best option at that point. But as you said, Harry, they, they felt like they were chasing the game and that they couldn't claw themselves back in, you know, with three points here, three points there. But I mean, that's that's what cost them this one because there were some pretty easy points on offer that, I mean, no doubt Harry, Harry um, Will Harrison would have scored. So, yeah, pretty disappointing. But yeah, the leadership was definitely improved. But I, I think there was just a really solid defensive line that, that center pairing with Lalakai Fakedi and Parisi looked to be improving so much um, and, and developing. And, I mean, I, I haven't, you know, the, the young, lock, young lock pairing, uh, they've done pretty well in the last couple of weeks as well. So it's been good. Good to see Gus Bell back and, and firing. I think there was quite a few positives. Very good. And uh, we will move on, but uh, quickly, 
in the same vein as the Crusaders, did you guys double down on the Brumbies at halftime in the Waratahs game? Or are you not prepared to answer that uh, as, as of this time? No, we're more hopeful when it's <laughs> your own team in the game. You know, we, my, my, my wife and Nelson's wife both were pretty adamant that they wanted the Brumbies to win because we did have our money riding on them. But well, again, well, we wanted yeah. to take the loss. We really did. Just didn't yeah. happen for us. Yeah, I like it. You always got to tip against what you actually want so you have a result either way. That's right. Very, it's a win-win. Very good. Um, and the other two games, look, the Blues dominated the Hurricanes by the end. Kind of a slow start for them, but eventually they got it together and they really dominated that second half. Um, and the Reds smoked the Rebels um, with a very fast start. What um, what did you guys think of those two games just quickly? Look, they're back and forth at, at, at points. You know, uh, both of them sort of blew out a little bit on the scoreboard, but, you know, they both teams sort of let the other side back in. The Hurricanes had, you know, a couple yellow cards, did well to sort of stem any flow throughout that period. I think actually took the lead maybe with one of their yellow cards just after half time. Whereas the Reds just, you know, blew away the Rebels early and we thought it could be a record score. You know, I think it was 24 nil before the, the Rebels had done anything or even had a chance to do anything. And, and they're just not a team that you had the faith to, to work their way back into the game, seeing as they don't score a lot of tries. But, you know, credit to them in that first half. They, they did really, really well. In that second half, they, it was just too far for them. Yeah, after the 18th minute when they were down 24 nil, they actually lost the rest of the game 19 points to 20. So they were really competitive. It's just, you know, I guess mentally the Reds maybe not quite as switched on when they had a bit more of a comfortable lead. Oh. But it just showed that, you know, you can't let your guard down for a second against a good side like the Reds because they are just so lethal out wide. And it was good to see the Reds attack working so well despite really changing their back line around a lot with Stewart coming in at inside centre and pushing the rest of the back line out. Yeah, no Dalgunu starting, no Vunavalu. There's some pretty impressive names to have, have missing and still score a bunch of tries. Mm. Can I just say my um, my play of the week was yep. Scott Gregory's hit on Ethan Blackadder oh. off the back of that scrum. That was one of the most impressive tackles I can remember seeing. Mm. I love those hits from Damian McKenzie this year and... There's been a couple of other players that have really stood up. But, man, how who have you seen that size take a barging loose forward front on just in front of his line and just take him to school? Rack his arm. Him. Oh, it was, I love that hit. I all of a sudden like Scott Gregory again. It was awesome. It, it was a funny thing, you know. He, he didn't go in for a dominant tackle at, at waist height or, or anything to try and smash him backwards. He knew that he had a hard runner running at him and he wrapped him up high. So it was it was a clear, you know, decision that he was going to try to wrap his upper body up rather than try to cut him in half like a pace army tackle or something like that. But it was just so impressive, the, the strength he had in that tackle. And to be able to stop him, you know, moving a couple more metres to get over that line, it was, it was really impressive. Yeah, he went high. He planted his feet, but he definitely drove in hard. Oh, no, 100%. But it was just a completely different tackle technique, you know. He wasn't trying to chop the player. He yeah. went, I'm going to take him high and I'm going to shut him down this way. Completely different decision than you see most players take there. Look, I'll concede it was awesome. I'm not prepared to go as far and say that I love Scott Gregory now. But, uh, oh, 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 I never said love. Don't oh, you put oh. words in my mouth, Gary. <laughs> but words. that's mainly because I just spent about five minutes talking about how much I love Ethan Blackadder just before we, we jumped on the pod. So, uh, <laughs> no, he's, he's been awesome um, this year. So... Um, very good. That's the the quick run of a few games. Harry, you've uh, you've given us your your point, your bang on point of the round. Nels, what was your um, main talking point of the round? Mine's just I think that evolution and, and continual growth of Fraser McBride. This is the second week in a row that he's been. Who would have guessed it? We, we should have had the odds there. <laughs> what was Nelson going to talk about? Yeah, I, I thought about Papali'i as well. I thought about Michael Wells, but I went, no, I'll go Fraser McBride. But yeah, no, his last two weeks, he's had 51, 54 fantasy points. And I mean, what's the relevance to, to that, to what we're talking about? I mean, it just shows his work rate, you know? He's actually absolutely involved in everything. He's had a 94% tackle success rate. That's 74 from 79. He's making, you know, decent tackle numbers each match as well numerous pilfers I think he did get lucky once or twice in this match where his arms touched the ground but I mean that's another skill to be able to take and you know be able to 
get the core going the right way for you there and, and blur those lines in, in the breakdown. But for me, it really feels like those early years of Michael Hooper when he started to come onto the scene, be a really, really dominant force at quite a young age. And I, I just think he's got a massive future ahead of him. And I think he's taken that step up and he's proving that, you know, he is as good as we thought he was. We're going to have to have a Fraser McWright section of the pod each week, uh, I think, before long. But um, no, yep. it was pretty immense. Um, and look, I guess in a similar vein, my talking points of the round was uh, the boys up front, the props. How good were the props this week? Specifically, how good were the Aussie props? Um Mr. How Incredible, good, sorry, please, you go. How good was Taniel Tupo's swan dive? Can you oh, call man. that? <laughs> he, look, he's got a bit of work to do on the swan dive, but um, <laughs> he's too, a but, I mean, look, yeah, but lifting that bucket ass off the floor is even too much of a challenge for him. No, he, he was scared. He was honestly scared. He, he backed out halfway. That has to have a new name. I don't know what it is. Look, he's probably told off by the groundskeeper because if he jumps much higher, then he's going to put a big dent in the floor. And so, you know, it's um, he's been given words, I reckon. But no, the props, look, I was... Tupo, I'll get to him. Um, you know how much I love Tupo. But Mr. Incredible Angus Bell returning to start for the Tars. He was a huge reason that the Tars did very, very well. Um, 65 fantasy points from a prop. Uh, no tries in that. There was, he had 18 carries in the game. That is immense. That actually puts him at third for the week, you know, behind, you know, the drawn uh, man of the round, two guys there that we'll, we'll touch on a little bit later. So that is very, very impressive from a prop. Yeah, third, third for the week in fantasy points. Um, yeah. I, I think like, I, that's probably, I need to actually check how far that up is. It's probably top of the week in carries. I'm not sure if anyone else made 18 carries in a game, but I'll, I'll, have, I'll pretty... have to confirm that. That's a lot. Um, pretty high. And uh, yeah, Tupo, look, the guy Tupo we talked about, 59 fantasy points. He scored two tries. And uh, I mean, he is now seventh on the Reds' all time try scorers list uh, with 20 tries. Um, he's only 24 years old and he's just surpassed Tim Horan, Digby Iwani, Will Genya, Rod Davies, Heinze, Daniel Herbert. I mean, it's pretty incredible to think. Uh, he's he's going to be top of that list before long. Um, we I, we were just talking about. I think Scott Higginbotham has the um, uh, it's for, forty one tries, the most try uh, tries by any forward in Super Rugby. And uh, I mean, two boats halfway there. He's he's tracking that down for sure. So um, very much looking forward to that. Um, and look, honourable mention for some other props, just because I'm that excited about how well they were doing. HJH another forty eight points. He did, made fifteen carries. So that means the Tars props. Got through 33 of the total 147 carries for the um, the Tars. That's wow. almost a quarter of the carries. There's just you're getting a huge value out of those props. So they were awesome this week. And um, yeah, I think I mean we all often talk about the strength of the Aussie props as opposed to the Kiwis. There's one thing we might have them in, and um, I'm very excited about them. So very good. Now let's uh, move on to the um, to preview round seven. Um, no, actually, sorry. No, I've jumped the gun there, haven't I? Fantasy. <laughs> fantasy points. Um, who wants to take us through some of the top fantasy points, including the fantasy man of the match? Harry, you've been quiet, mate. Yeah, so the fantasy man of the match, I mean, the week, sorry. It's the same player as every single week. It's Cody Taylor. <laughs> same team, at least. 68 points for him. And, and uh, Tom Banks actually had his biggest week in a long, long time as well. 68 points on the back of that exceptional try in that first half as well. So Taylor had six carries for 30 plus metres, had a line breaker try, 16 tackles, just 32 points for a front row, which is just epic when you're talking about work rate for some of those props as well before. Nine out of his nine lineouts thrown as well, so just bankable points, consistent for him as well. No doubt the Crusaders lineout is is one of the best in the competition. For Banks, 11 carries for 110 metres, so again, at that 10 metres per carry number that we always look for as an effective outside back, had a couple of line breaks, seven tackle busts, four offloads and a try as well. So I think he had his probably his best game in attack. He still, I still think he goes missing in and out of games, but definitely, definitely. one of the best games I've seen from him for a long time. Agreed. Yeah, look, I think there's a couple other names worth a mention. Lalika Fricchetti, we touched on him in that centre partnership. He got 60 points. He's been really good for the Tars. Frank Lamani, 
how good is it to see a halfback playing on the wing? This is becoming a tradition now, a new thing for for Australian rugby a, side. A trend. This is a a trend. trend. Yeah, a trend. That's a, that's a good a quick word. Is it yeah. because we have no wingers, or is it because our scrum halves are such good wingers? I mean, if we watch Frank Lamani, it's because he's a good winger. He, he was he's, awesome. He's much faster than I knew he than I thought he was. Do you know what I mean? His acceleration is insane. <laughs> He, he genuinely was a good option on the wing and he went looking for the ball. He split the line, you know, in tight. He, he was very exciting. Um, yeah, he got 56 points. I he think, was... Yeah. Sorry? I was going to say, I think he was literally the most dangerous bloke on the field. You know what I mean? And that's against the Reds. There's some dangerous outside backs there. But every time mm. he had the ball, those line breaks he was making, just, um, yeah, he was, it was scary. Scary good. I had one more worth a mention to, to chuck in there. And that was Mitch Hunt. You know, we, we've talked him down a little bit in terms of actually, you know, being a consistent player uh, this, this season for the Highlanders. He got his shot to, to start in that 10 jersey um, with Ioane missing. So it was all him. And he really stood up. And I think it's the best game I've ever seen him play. I think he was really, really solid around the paddock. paddock and uh, directed his men around him very well. Yeah. Super sub. We have a super sub this week. Uh, Lachlan Lonigan. That was smooth. That was a smooth transition. No one's even going to notice that when we listen back to this. <laughs> that's so exactly I, where we're at, Harry. Um, <laughs> I noticed no difference, but that's all right. Uh, super <laughs> sub was Lachlan Lonigan, 51 points coming off the bench. I think he did actually get quite a few minutes. Probably should have uh, looked that one up. But um, no, look, he's got a... I, I think he got about 50, mate, if we look at his points per minute. No, that's for the round. That's nice, Nels. I know you were struggling with maths a little bit earlier this time. No, um, that's for that's points per minute for the year is 1.06. So he's come off the bench a few games. Um, and when he does, he's been getting a point per minute. So I think he did get I think he did get a good 30, uh, 35 minutes or something in this game. Got, got just quite after a while. the half. Yeah, yeah, just after the half. Um, and yeah, he's just looking really, really exciting. So um Definitely the super sub of the round and the, sorry, how much? 25 minutes? 35. 35, 35, yeah. So big, big innings for him. Um, And the Captain Mud Award for he who shall never be named again on the pod. Uh, Captain Mud, you know who it is. Um, This week, Tommy Cusack, minus 19 points. He was doing his best to lose it for fantasy managers with, uh, he got two yellow cards, uh, which then was a red card. So, that was a lot of negative points. Um, I, I guess he must have done something on the on the, the very short periods of time he obviously was on the field because otherwise he could have been around minus 40 or 50 with uh, mm. the penalties those incurred and whatever else. So yeah. he was obviously having a ripper game before all that. Could I give a quick shout out to Karifi who seems to be doing his best every week to take the home medal? <laughs> every week. Every. That's true. This this week, Karifi got a yellow card for like just... Being a job. Yeah, no, but it wasn't even like his usual type of penalty. I can't remember what he went out of his way to get another yellow. I can't remember what it was this week, but um, good on the bloke. So 